Once there ruled a great and virtuous king of England, Athwold. He left his daughter Goldborough to the care of Godrich, Earl of Cornwall, who was instructed to watch over her and eventually marry her to the highest man in the kingdom. However, he betrayed the king and imprisoned her in a tower. Across the sea in Denmark, there too was a virtuous king, Birkebed, who left behind his son and heir, Havelock. But a treacherous agent, Goddard, gave Havelock to a fisherman to be drowned in the sea. The fisherman was called Grimm. He saw in Havelock miraculous signs that proved the child was the rightful heir to the throne. Grimm fled with Havelock across the sea, landing on the estuary of the River Humber and founding the town of Grimsby. On the Heritage Channel tonight, our Viking history, public artworks and memories of the Queen's visit in 1958. Welcome to the Heritage Channel on Clee TV and the first of our new series of programmes that explores the fascinating history of North East Lincolnshire in a monthly roundup of news, views and other stories. During this period of mourning for our late Queen Elizabeth II, we dedicate this first of our new series of programmes to her memory. I don't think that anyone could say that they weren't a fan of the Queen as a person generally. I think now that she's gone, she was always a constant, wasn't she? She was there, even if you didn't take any notice. I mean, working until what was a job, you know, until the day before she passed, was just absolutely phenomenal. The Queen and Prince Philip first visited Grimsby in 1958, shortly after the coronation, and many local people still remember the occasion. Martin Fry says, I stood on the railway bridge. I think it was the one at the station. We travelled from Goxhill to see her. I was five or six at the time. Paul King remembers standing on Wheelsby Road near the entrance to the woods to watch her go by. Nicola Acethorpe says, the Queen toured Grimsby docks, listened attentively while officials explained how different areas of the country preferred different kinds of fish, Two of the skippers and then was offered a selection of fish for the Britannia. Ron Gillo remembers when she came off the docks travelling down the Humber Street Bridge. I was sat on top of Neil Green's fish house roof. I was only 16. Sue Moore remembers the Queen being presented with a bouquet by Sylvia Savile, a girl in our class at Littlecoats Primary School. All the schools stood on Ladysmith Road to watch her go by. And Mike Garrett remembers as a schoolboy seeing the Queen during her Silver Jubilee visit in 1977. This new series of the Heritage Channel has been funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund to showcase the unique heritage of North East Lincolnshire, as well as our monthly magazine programmes covering events, projects, people and activities, we will also be producing feature documentaries. Training in video production will help local people and organisations make the most of this important media. There will be opportunities for local people interested in heritage to be channel correspondents and work will be commissioned from local creatives. The new series will be launched with a public open day at Grimsby Town Hall on Saturday the 17th of September 
at Spark Grimsby's network event for local creatives at the Great Escape on the 20th of September and at the Heritage Network meeting hosted by Heritage Lincolnshire in October. You can find out more on our Facebook page or email news at heritage-channel.org. Grimsby Creates is a North East Lincolnshire initiative that aims to celebrate the culture and heritage of our local community. I caught up with CDF programme manager Sarah Smith at the launch of one of the latest public murals gracing the town. We've commissioned some creative organisations locally to deliver much needed creative activity in the town of Grimsby. And we also have funded Creative Start to deliver the Paint the Town Proud project. It was really well developed already at the start when the tender submission came in and we were really taken with the heritage aspect but also the use of so many different community groups, community members and the vast variety of uh, creative activity that was on display. And I think what the murals particularly have shown is that the community have really engaged with, with them and when they're passing by, their spirits are uplifted by seeing such vibrant murals on the walls. The team from Paint the Town Proud came along and asked people what they thought of it and also did a, a lot of social media engagement during the time that Jake was here to paint, um, which really got people excited. I moved to Mexico in March of 2015 and I just got really heavily influenced by the folk art of Oaxaca in Mexico, all of the colourful patterns and, and I just started playing with it and it really worked well with my kind of graffiti style. So I'm from Leeds, I saw a lot of like graffiti art around Leeds when I was a kid and so I got into graffiti around the age of 13, 14 years old. Around the age of 20, I started doing uh, youth workshops and community centres around Leeds. I quit my nine to five job and went self-employed and it's been really successful. I moved to Mexico in March of 2015. I love the Mexican culture. I lived there for seven years. The, the folk art in Oaxaca, they, they create a lot of uh, sculptures, which are alebrijes. They're based on the Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Like in the afterlife, you get a spirit animal. And I just really loved that, so I started creating my own. <laughs> and it really worked well with my kind of graffiti style and kind of like fused them together. Well, I also run a Mex uh, festival in Mexico with a team of people. It's called Akamo Arts Festival, it's just south of Cancun. Andy P, who's a friend of mine, he's been coming to our festival for the last four years. So he's been bringing me in on some projects and then he introduced me to Becky and the Creative Start team and highly recommended me and I'm really, really happy and, and yeah, really happy to be here. We, we were approached by Andy and Becky. Basically, Andy had been looking around town and he, he came across our wall and he thought it would be a fantastic place to put this uh, mural. It's blown me away. Seeing the, the, the colours actually come to life and the image come to life, it's far and away exceeded my expectation. It's in a critical key town centre location, being in the Civic Quarter next to the court and opposite the Town Hall. So for the council, it was probably a bit of a make or break, but it was bold, it was brave and it's brilliant. It's, it's fantastic for the local area, you know, to try and regenerate it. Definitely, you know, a, a real positive for the, for the local community, yeah. So, so I did ended up doing quite a lot of research on, on Grimsby. I mean, the Haddock obviously in there because it's the fishing town and I kind of wanted to represent the Haddock as keep providing some kind of tourism and bringing up the town. And then I'm putting a Viking boat in there because Grimsby was founded by Grim. And I've got a, the Dock Tower, yeah, I'm throwing that in there, but they're all gonna be like underwater, kind of showing how the, the Haddock basically always will be and has been the main income and source of revenue and culture for this town.
Councillor Tom Furnu, the new portfolio holder for Culture, Heritage and Visitor Economy, thinks that the heritage of our area is what makes it special. As we celebrate our local heritage with a range of events in September, I caught up with him to find out more. Culture within North East Lincolnshire is a very up and coming thing. I think we are starting to build a programme of events which take place annually. Festival of the Sea, Festival of Light, we have the Viking Festival taking place this year. North East Lincolnshire can't afford to get left behind when it comes to the visitor economy. So bringing events to, to North East Lincolnshire is only going to attract people, bring money into the local economy, you know, help local businesses thrive. One of my ambitions is to, you know, is to build on the strength of the cultural programme that we have at the minute. Heritage is hugely important. North East Lincolnshire has a huge, huge amount of, you know, assets and resources when it comes to heritage. You know, they need to be, you know, brought forward, more visitors to visit, which, uh, which is hopefully what the, the local Heritage Days will help to bring to the area. With more details of some of the heritage events you can enjoy in September, here's our correspondent, Gemma Lingard. There is lots to discover and enjoy during Grimsby's Heritage Open Day on Saturday the 17th of September. Delve into the history of the award-winning Fishing Heritage Centre with 20% discounts. Enjoy free entry to the Grimsby Time Trap Museum and explore the magnificent function rooms in the Town Hall. Discover the long history of Grimsby Minster admire the crafts at the Maker's Market and explore the public artwork in St James's Square, including Annabel McCourt's murmuration and history etched into the Come Follow Me pathway that leads to the Minster. Join the cast and crew of the Caxton Theatre for a backstage tour around the props and costumes of this 80-year-old Art Deco building and discover the rich history of the 86-year-old Grimsby Central Hall and the famous people whose career started there. And finally, you can explore the 800-year-old St Nicholas Church, set in beautiful grounds and featuring gargoyles, medieval glass and brasses in this Grade 1 listed 13th century building. Full details, including opening times, are available on the Discover North East Lincolnshire website. Working in North East Lincolnshire, um, it's a great place to, to live. And I think this area has got so much to offer. This is a fantastic place to live, it's a fantastic place to visit, and it's a fantastic place to stay once you've got here. I know I'm one of those people that came here 30 years ago. It's a very uh, caring community, there are lots of organisations uh, working together here. I believe that we've got a, a huge amount of dialogue between all the organisations, which is certainly getting stronger and better. All our clients are really friendly and they welcome everybody in their home with open arms. A burgeoning town, an opportunity in terms of economic growth that is second to none in terms of our history. Lots of things are happening here. Come and live here, come and work here, come and stay here. Coming up on tonight's programme, heritage trails in North East Lincolnshire, but first, our Viking heritage. Grim fled with Havelock across the sea, landing on the estuary of the River Humber and founding the town of Grimsby. There he raised the boy who went on to grow to an extraordinary size. Godrich, Earl of Cornwall, noticing Havelock's unusual size and believing him to be nothing but a peasant, decided to marry him to King Athelwold's daughter, Goldborough, fulfilling his promise of marrying her to the highest man in the kingdom. But 
that soon both Havelock and Goldborough were given visions of the future, in which Havelock is both King of England and Denmark. Together, they sailed across the sea and conquered Denmark. Before invading England and slaying Godrich in a battle. As the rightful king of Denmark and England, Havelock ruled for more than 60 years. The legend will be celebrated with Grim Fullfest, a £250,000 celebration of our Viking history, made possible by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. The year-long range of activities begins this month. The celebration starts on Friday the 23rd with the arrival of Grimm and the longship Valhalla at the Riverside. The festival continues over the weekend with Viking battles in People's Park, longship voyages, entertainments on the Valkyrie stage and a host of other activities for you to enjoy. Full details on the Discover North East Lincolnshire website. One of the best ways to discover North East Lincolnshire's fascinating heritage is on the tourist trails. We joined historian and broadcaster Emma Lingard on a trail around the town of Grimsby. Did you know Grimsby Town Hall was built in the Italian Renaissance style? Started in 1863, it was completed by 1888. The arrival of the railway and the opening up of land for development and the booming of the docks, and this symbolised that wealth. On the front of the town hall, you can see the town's coat of arms and the resplendent boar heads. And there are also five figureheads, which are key to Grimsby. Edward III, who gave the land to the freemen. Gervais Hollis, symbolising the town's history from the 1500s. John Whitgift, born in the town and who became the first Archbishop of Canterbury. The Earl of Yarborough, who was one of the largest landowners in the Victorian age. And of course, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, the ruling monarchs of the time. is named after the Danish fisherman Grimm and on the side of the town's library you'll find the great Grimsby seal. The original was made in the 13th century. In the centre of it is Grimm resplendent with his sword and shield and at his feet are the Danish prince Havelock and the English princess Goldborough. The story told by Whistler says that Grimm was given Prince Havelock with the idea that he was going to kill him. Instead, Grimm, realising that the boy's life was in danger, fled to England and to the Saxon kingdom of Lindsay, where Grimm went on to found the town named after him and Prince Havelock went on to marry the English princess Goldborough. Haven, as the name suggests, was a haven for sailors coming in from the North Sea up the Humber estuary and into the port of Grimsby. And here is the haven. It was a creek and it was the main reason why people settled in Grimsby. The creek wound its way along what is now the modern day Doughty Road and Ainsley Street. And it was the perfect place for sailors seeking refuge from the stormy seas.
Alexandra Dock was one of the first docks to be built when the medieval port near the riverhead began to silt up. To join the east and west marsh of Grimsby, a swing bridge was built in the 1870s. But the bridge we see today, a rolling lift bascule bridge, was built in 1925. The designer was Alfred Gardner, the docks engineer for the London North Eastern Railway. It was opened in 1928 by the then Prince of Wales. Freshney runs into the Haven and this part of Grimsby is known as Garth Lane and that's named after the fish garths. In the medieval period wattle hurdles were placed in the river and nets and traps were inside these garths and it's where the fishermen would catch migratory fish such as salmon and trout. Grimsby was well known for its herring trade and even then some boats were going out as far away as Iceland. Street runs from the old marketplace all the way to Lock Hill near the docks and it follows the old Wald Newton Turnpike Road. The street was redeveloped in the Victorian age when the railways arrived in the town so look up above the modern street fronts and you will see those glorious Victorian buildings with their friezes and their decorative chimney pots showing us that once again the town had risen in wealth and prosperity and people had confidence. The former Savoy Cinema, which opened in 1920, was the first cinema in Grimsby to show a talking picture. The cinema seating is still inside the building, but look above and you can see one of the Greek muses to arts and culture. The old marketplace and the bullring resonate strongly in the memories of older Grimbarians, but sadly these two places were demolished in the early 1970s as part of a big master plan to bring Grimsby into the 21st century. But their names still live on. The bullring got its name from the days of bull baiting, when butchers would bring their livestock to the market and people would witness the spectacle of them being killed. It was finally outlawed in the 1770s by a mayor of Grimsby for being a barbaric sport that people no longer wished to watch. Did you know Grimsby Minster, formerly known as St James Church, has been the parish church since 1586. It was built in 1190 and started out as a chapel attached to Wellow Abbey. Inside are some beautiful stained glass windows, including one of John Whitgift, Archbishop of Canterbury to Queen Elizabeth I, and there at the crowning of King James, who was born not so far away. It's also home to Grimsby's Imp, the twin of Lincoln's. You can see the other three trails around Immingham, Cleethorpes and the Time Trap Museum in future programmes. <laughs> well, that's almost all for our first programme in the new series. If you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to join our group or on YouTube, click the subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes. If you have a heritage story you would like to share or to find out more about joining the Heritage Channel team, contact our news desk, news at heritage-channel.org. 
as we pay tribute to the Queen who has served this country and Commonwealth for over 70 years, we also celebrate the crowning of a new monarch, heralding hope for the future in this most challenging of times. Join us next month when we explore the Time Trap Museum, see a Viking battle and cover more heritage news, views and features that celebrate the unique heritage of our coastal community.